Hello, hopefully everyone found this feed. I had to start a new one. So I'll just wait a minute for that and I'm going to share the link, which you can watch anytime later on. I'm just sharing this link and you can share it with other people. My name is Lisa from Artist Palette. Welcome in. You can type where you're tuning in from if you want to. You can see my colors that I have right here. I am actually going to be using uh, mostly these three colors here and some, and of course, white. And then I will put my brushes on the side as well. So I have a round kind of medium brush, a large flat, another large brush is this large round, almost mop brush. I'll put it up closer in just a minute and any detailed brushes that you have. About a size number two or zero is zero is best. And we're doing the Deathly Hollows today. So it's gonna be fun. And this is my just my white paint I'm adding. Hello, welcome. We'll get started very shortly. I don't want people to wait. Okay. Hi. Okay, so we are just about to paint along and you can watch later. We're going to be painting and recreating the Harry Potter Deathly Hallows painting. Yeah, I was just waiting another few minutes only because the other feed, oh, it wasn't displaying my video properly. So I just made a new one. Okay, so brushes, I'm just moving that to the side. Here is a couple of examples of large brushes. One is a round kind of mop brush. This is a flat. I think I'm going to mostly use this one. I like this one. And then for some medium brushes, as some examples, you can use a round or you can use anything that is flat. I like the, I like a number four or half inch bright brush, something like this. This is an angled brush. Um, it can come in handy or just a round one. And then I have my detailed brush right here. Okay. So you can pause, you can take your time with this. So let's, I guess let's get started. Um, I'm going to just dip my very large brush into my water and if you have a mixing palette that you want to use, you can grab that or just mix from the same palette that you have already. This is my mixing palette. And after I take a little dip of my water, now we're going to mix a lot of what our background is going to look like. Very mysterious. It's very monochromatic throughout the whole thing, which makes it kind of fun and interesting, I find. Let's start with a big scoop of yellow. 
a little bit more. I want to get a little bit of a pile going here. And then I'm just going to take a dip. So very small, tiny dip of red. You can always add more red because then it will turn more and more brown. But I'm trying to keep it looking a bit gold, which if you have gold, you can just build off from gold paint. So here I have a golden yellow color because that dot of red gives it a warmer yellow look. And then I'm going to take a tiny little dot of black. So I just want to start off just a little bit and you can see it overpowers it really fast. And let's take a bit more yellow and a little bit of red. Just have a little bit of red on the side. So you might have to play around with this just a little bit. The key is taking white, taking a bit of white. And then you can see how it's looking because um, that's gonna give it that golden color. If you need to add anything else, like a bit more black, you need it to be a more deeper altogether. So keep it a bit deeper and you can always put a bit more red too if you want it warmer. So if you wanna warm it up, kind of like what I did over there, just add it only little dots of red too much will make it super brown and very red looking. So once you have this color, then you're pretty much set and you don't have to stress too much about making it over and over again because you already know how to make it once, you can make it again. Let's just test it out. Something like this. And I'm gonna wipe off some of the paint. I'm gonna wipe off a lot of my paint on my napkin. I don't want a big, heavy chunk of it. Okay. Let's take a little bit more white. And start testing it out just along the edges. This is actually my square uh, about 12 by 12 or 10 by 10, I think it's a 10 by 10. Anyways. And I know that my moon's gonna be right around here too. So let's put a circle. It's not directly in the center. However, you can put it directly in the center. Having in the center is kind of nice. Circle that out just a little bit. So one thing I just want to give a little tip as you're mixing a color, I just want to wash off this brush because this brush, if you're using a very large brush that holds a lot of paint, sometimes see it, it picks up a lot of yellow and it just never goes away. It makes it more yellow. So I'm just going to wash it off and get off the extra paint stuck in my brush. There. So I just rinsed it off. I have a, clean brush here. So now if you need to adjust your colors, you can do it a lot easier or pick up your paint without other colors resurfacing. Black and a little bit of white. Should mute it down just a little bit. There, there's just a little bit more darker golden looking and the yellow should not be coming back from my brush. I'm going to start dabbing. This is what I'm doing a lot of the time is just dabbing, giving it a lot of texture. And if you have questions, you can also type in chat. You might have to make more paint as you go, especially if you've been playing around with it and trying to find your happy color, basically. Your happy gold color, whatever you want your background to mostly look like. I'm gonna take a little extra yellow, or sorry, no, white.
and we will come back to the moon and put more white into it and actually fill it in with white. Once we get most of this filled in here, just along the top, and I'll put a line right down here. So I left like a few inches right here for where I want more of a horizon line to be. think another, if you're looking for shortcuts for mixing, you can always build off of a yellow ochre. Okay, so that is one color that I do recommend if you want to not mix as much and you just want to use a yellow ochre, build off of that. It's mostly just a, a yellow ochre going throughout. Or you can build off of brown and put more yellow and black and white into it. So I'm just trying to use more of this color right here so you can see it again. Lots of dabs. You can also, if you're, if that's taking forever, you can kind of do little circular motions. You can just kind of circle it around. If the dabbing is too much for you, you just want to go a bit faster. Okay. I'm not done. I'm not done with the background. I'm mixing some more. So I'm gonna let that dry for a sec. It's very transparent right now because I was just doing some dabbing. And I think I'll just do one more um, layer, a little bit more grayish tone. So I'm gonna put an over, I'm gonna overlay some bit of like a gray and this will still pop through, but now will be more gray over top. So I'm gonna let that dry. And then in just a minute, I'm going to start filling down here. Uh, just placing some things so that we have some water and then we have a little bit of, we're going to put trees later, but we also have the edges here where this side of the tree is going to come out and meet with the other side of, I call it a tree because it reminds me of roots. It looks like the roots are just growing and meeting together to make a pathway from the ground. Okay, so I'm washing this off. Washing that off, drying it off on my napkin. And then my next layer on top, like I said, is gonna be a bit more grayish in tone. It will keep this as an undertone, the warm gold look. And somebody's asking about recommended supplies. Yes, it was on our Facebook page or it is on our Facebook page. I'm not sure if you saw us from there, but I will just verbally say it again. I am using these primary colors. Not really, you don't really need blue actually. Um, bright yellow, or I recommend yellow ochre, which is really great for a shortcut of mixing. Bit of bright red, white, and black. 
And just in case, a phthalo blue, just in case you feel like adding different colors in. This is my 10 by 10 or 12 by 12 canvas. And an example of my large, it's a large three quarter inch round. My medium square, which is a bright half inch or number four. And then any detailed brush that you might have, a number zero or number two. And of course, water cup and paper towel. Okay, so I'm going to continue on with the bottom. So, <clears throat> using my large brush still seems to be doing the job. Uh, I'm just going to build off of this color. I'm going to take a little bit of white or just extra of that color. It's very much, it's very similar. It's pretty much the same. Maybe a little touch of black, get it a bit more gray looking from here. And just pause the video if you need to take your time or go back to anything. Sometimes, you know, you want to mix the right color and it's not working out the first time. So this is pretty light. It's basically this color here, except with some more and a touch, of, touch more white and black and it makes it really light. And I'll just wait another minute or two, just in case before I put my second layer up here. It just gives it a bit of extra drying time. And I'm going more gray tone, like I said before, overall. Welcome in. If you're just starting, great. You can get started, you can rewind. All right, so my second layer. Let me grab some white. Same large brush because that's what I used the first time. So it makes sense for me. White and black. Mixing over top of the same color I had before, but you can see it's not actually much paint that I'm mixing with it. It's gonna be very, very little. So if you have a big pile of it, just add in a little 
uh, kind of like a pea size maybe of your previous color you had. And the more white you add, of course, the lighter it's gonna be. So if you take a bit more black, you can keep it more shadowed, say on one side where the, the tree is right over here. Okay, let's just start dabbing right over top. So I'm going to show you more of my darker gray with the undertone of my gold, just right there, or yellow ochre. Test it out. If it's too dark, just add a bit more white, but I think a nice shadow on the side is great. This also, at the same time, gives it a bit more of a leafy look when we put the tree there in front of it. So it does a lot of the textured work and the leaves almost instantly. And as I get over to that side, let's just take a little bit more white, get it a bit lighter. a lighter gray. It still has that undertone of the yellowy gold or however brown we want it to go. Don't be afraid to just grab some white if it's still really dark. So if I just take a little bit of white here and I go and keep going with my dabs, it gets a lot brighter. This is a good idea to put a bit around where your circle is, where the sun slash moon. And what's good about this is the color is to your liking and preference. This is just mostly white to brighten it up a little bit over here. Trying to keep the other side a little bit more darker. So I can keep it nice and dark on this side with some extra black. take black and do it. So I'm washing that off again.
So if um, you're wondering what the next step is going to be, it will be to put a little bit more streaks down here, um, get the water mostly filled in so that we have our background. We want to try to get a lot of our background pretty much done with a couple trees. So you can see a little bit in the, in the distance, some really simple ones. Sticking around the same color. Very, yeah, it's very much a monochromatic type of painting. So it's going to be a lot of mixing very much, very similar colors that we have already mixed. So I'm just going to assume that everybody here that's either watching or painting along are fans of Harry Potter. <laughs> Which, after painting this, I think I'll just go on a movie marathon once again. Okay. So one brush that if you if your large one is just too big, you can use a round, a little bit smaller one, more of a medium. And this will just be to get some texture for the trees in the background and our detailed brush to put little sticks there, represent trees. So what I like to do for mixing, you could just use the exact same color you had. You can get things a little bit more warmer with equal parts yellow and red to get things. If you want more warmer, maybe you want to do a different color of trees. I'm not, I'm not sure. But I'm going to take a bit more black. So when you take, I'm just mixing in the same spots, trying to build off, um, off of that color. It works out nicely when you build off of previous colors, especially when you're working with brownish colors too. And then you can always add white to brighten it up if it's too dark. You don't want it to stand out too much. Let's see, test it out. This is just along the horizon here. Okay, so I'm gonna come back and after I put in a bit more of, I have to put white into my moon here. I will add a little bit more on top of the white, but this color, I can put a couple streaks into the water. You can use the thin side of a flat brush That extra little touch of red warms it up a little bit more. And all that yellow is not as, should not be as yellowy looking. I'm starting off with a few streaks in here. Nice and streaky. And then I'm going to use a flat brush. I'm going to use my a bright half inch, this one right here. So I want to start making where my tree lines are gonna be against, this is the water, this is the land on the other side. That is, after I take a tiny dip of my water, 
building off of that same color, I'm just gonna add another dip of black, just a little dip of it. And when I first made this, it wasn't like I was carefully picking colors. I just tried to change up my color a lot of the time. So when I take a little extra dip of black and I start painting on, if I need to, I'll add more black to my brush just so that it, see how it's a bit more obvious now? Especially if it's wet, things can um, pick up the color a lot and it's not as dark as you thought it was going to be. So all I'm doing is just working my way just gonna cut it across. See how it's coming down to the bottom? Just cutting it across like that, a little swoop. And then when you're using the thin side, you can go back and forth right up to that line, grab more or grab more black if you want it darker and just streak it out go over the line i like to it's going to be i think it's going to be messy at first we all know that there's especially if you painted before there's always an awkward stage and there's always a bit of a messy stage so get a lot of shadow on that side and for those who are just tuning in yes you can rewind and watch this from the beginning at any point you can do that now afterwards whenever you want and a day, we're gonna never take this down. It's gonna stay up on our channel. Then we should focus on our moon. It's been bothering me. It looks so silly like that. So I'm gonna take my white. I'm just putting some more white on my palette. And uh, I kind of want fresh white, so I didn't want my contaminated white. I'm just gonna grab, you can use the same flat or round, whatever works for you. I'm just gonna use the flat one. I don't mind. Try not to take any contaminated white, but it's not a huge deal if you slightly touch, you know, some gray or anything like that. I'm gonna go and even if you have to start with one coat and then you end up having to do say three, that's fine. It's pretty normal, especially if your paint is very transparent, which you'll probably know as soon as you do your first coat. I have to wash this off because I was picking up some of my background paint don't want to keep spreading around, but it's a good idea to always start from your middle and then swirl it out. So as you can see, as I keep swirling it out, if I pick up any previous color, all it's going to do is spread it around and just mix everything that was white darker into this gold color. So let's start with just this one coat right here. Pretty necessary to do this after we did our background only because it's glowing. I wanted to make it look like it's glowing too. And when you put your background around a moon, it looks very, very choppy. Welcome in, Vicky. Yes, nice to see some, some familiar names painting along with me. And I'm actually just about to paint something for no end of November, November 30th, a nice winter painting for free. So if you guys want to throw some ideas at me, um, it's really hard to decide. And we've painted hundreds of paintings so far. So we're just trying to come up with some new ideas. And I'm going to wait like two minutes for that to dry. You can grab a blow dryer if you want to, especially if you're really impatient and you know that you're gonna keep touching it. If you keep trying to add more white while it's wet, it will always stay pretty much the same. But you can see how the glow is going and forming when you have a little bit of a damp gold around it, it gives it a bit of a glow. I kind of like that. 
but I do want to make this bigger. So my white's going to extend pretty much to the edge here. It's nice to see that there's a lot of Harry Potter fans that reread, watch the movie over and over again. So just so you know, I'm still here just waiting patiently for this. Okay. Now for those who are like, okay, what can we do? Well, that is drying. Um, not a whole lot, except we can put in a tree here on the side. That's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be a problem. It is only a problem if you are not done your background, meaning aside from this, this moon, if you are done and happy with whatever's over here, then you don't need to worry. Uh, so let's, let's just start with that. And this is a good like practice tree. However, if you happen to have, you know, I'm showing you my mixing palette here. If you happen to have pieces of paper or you want to use something like a mixing palette to practice your tree on to make it look a bit more gnarly and kind of, I guess, a bit artsy. It looks like a sketch. So I'm going to be using my detail brush. And starting to dip it in my water and when I take some black I'm just gonna pick up so water and black uh, every time I pick it up I'm always taking a bit of water let's say it's starting around here is my horizon right so this is approximately I know that approximately right here is where I want to start my ledge and the, the other side of the river where the three brothers are standing and walking on. So something like that. That's just where I want it to be right here. You can always raise it up. You just really can't lower it that easily. A bit more water, black paint again. And not too high above there, but you know, a little bit of a gap. So for me, it's about an inch and a half. Just starting from the side and we're slowly making a tree here. So it's think gnarly and I'm really not trying too hard to make it look exactly like the one I had in my original because I just let my wrist do a lot of the work. So I'm going to fill in the side here and that means it's mostly the trunk and the thickest part of the tree. So it would be quite thick and going off page uh, where life is beyond the canvas on the other side that we can't see. And then staying pretty thin as I get towards the top. I'm trying to make things bumpy, meaning textured. So I'm not trying to make it smooth. In fact, I'm trying to make it the opposite, which really does help with the whole gnarly tree look. And it just makes it look... Um, 
you know, in terms of like the eerie scenery, that's all I'm trying to capture. I'm not trying to make it too, I guess, feminine looking, too elegant, too soft. I want it to be a bit more sharp. Now, when I come just around here where it starts to split into the canvas and it's getting thinner, I'm just gonna start branching off. So not down here, right around the middle and really just do some crazy dips and curves, water, black paint. Sometimes you have to go over these just to keep it sharp. And from here, I'm making branches. So you can see I'm working pretty fast when I do a branch because I don't want to overthink my branch. Otherwise, I get this weird hesitation line. And then all of a sudden, it looks like you thought too hard about it and overthought your tree. You want to make it look like it just naturally flows like that. So if I, if I see an opportunity, I'm just going to use it. And you can see a lot of my branches too. So when I start inside a tree, I just press a bit harder and then just let it go. Some little zigzaggy things. Press very light when you go on the end, hardly press at all. And don't forget the other side of our tree. We wanna make sure that there's more branches on the other side and not just the one. a bit up here. Lots of overlap, maybe some intertwining, some twisted branches, that can be a thing. Not very many of my branches are like straight sticks. They don't have straight lines for the most part. They always have, they're always going somewhere. They're not just sticking straight out. That's the one thing I always avoid with trees is they're never a straight, perfect line. That's not 100% natural to me. It's, hmm, trees are imperfect. So we're trying not to make perfect lines. And then maybe like a little twig down here couple little things happening. You can also use a Sharpie if you're trying to go super ultra thin and you want little twigs as branches forming from outside the tree, but they don't, you're afraid to go too thick. And that is always a great idea to do. I think I'll stop there for now. I'm just trying to think if I need to add any more. Um, maybe I'll just extend this one branch. There. We'll come back to this later. So how does this go for you guys? Are you at the tree? Still practicing? How are trees for you? Sometimes they can be hard if you're not used to making certain types or trees at all because you want to make them perfect. I'm trying to make my circle dry faster. It's pretty dry.
Okay, and I'm going to do another coat with my white um, flat or round, starting from the middle once again and throwing it out. I like to use the flat side if you're using a square brush. So since it's more dry, it's pretty dry here. It turns a lot more white pretty fast. And even if it has a little hint of that gold, just let it be. I think it's great. I think it looks awesome. There is nothing really in nature that is just pure white. So don't get hung up on making it a pure white moon or sun. You know, it kind of looks like a hazy sun to me. I can't even remember if this was supposed to be a moon or a sun. I made this so long ago. I did sit at twilight, so I'm just going to say this is a moon. You don't need to roll your eyes at me if you already knew that, and I'm just being silly. All right. Okay. Just getting a little bit on the edge here. And uh, something to do with the background. If you're, now you can see my moon is actually kind of going pretty low down. It's not that the moon is actually sitting on the water. I'm going to cut off my horizon. Yes, I think I will do that. And make it more with this medium brush here that we did for the trees. some of that chestnut brown in equal parts red and yellow. Black. Turn this so you can see. See it turns pretty dark. But I didn't go that dark as you can tell. I'm going to take a bit more white here. And it gets just a little bit lighter. Start dabbing it. And if you're especially trying to make it look like it's a different color from your background, although similar colors are great, I personally like that for the monochromatic scheme. I'm just gonna fill this in. You just cut off where my moon is. So I went a little bit bigger for my moon. It's okay. And this is roughly, you know, kind of resembles a cloud, the amount of dabs that I did here. Lots of those. Let it be textured, just let it sit. And then right away what you can do, either with a flat, so you can use the very tip of your brush or with a detailed brush, which I think a detailed brush is good. A little bit of water again, take some black paint 
and start around the middle to just further away off from the middle. Just do some sticks. Just let it streak up. Starts looking and representing some trees. A little bit taller when you get into, say, a taller section. I just did a lot of them. I wanted to make it look very forest-like. So you can even do a little bit in between. So there's not much gaps in between your little lines you created. And it just looks like there's layers, which there is. So I kept that pretty simple. All right, so my next thing to do is put a couple little lines into the water. See those bit of white highlights? That's what I'm doing with a flat brush. Go back to my flat brush. Take just a little light coating of white. So it's, it's not too heavily coated. And just See, this is the edge here. I'm actually not going right into it. I just want maybe a couple in there, but mostly into the middle here where my moon is shining onto. A little bit more like that. And actually this is perfect for around Halloween time because it just gives a lot of Halloween vibes. And I'm going to touch up on some either dark gray or black. So you can decide if you use straight black and this is completely dry. Sometimes it's just gonna come up really, really dark. And some black, longer lines at the front. So you can see at the very bottom, I'm doing longer lines here. And then as I go further back, I'm just gonna do a little bit shorter, smaller lines, and it gives it more of a distanced look. So it's further away. And then as you get up here, longer, and it's closer to you. There. Okay, so my next step now, it's actually very exciting. I do want to start working on this part right here where the three brothers are going to be standing, just mapping that out. Feel free to use a pencil and, um, you know, you can watch this anytime. So if you're taking your time here, you can always wait for it to dry before you continue on. I'm going to start with my same flat brush and just grab black paint. So I had my line sticking out already for me. And it's going to start going up, of course. So in regards to how high, it's actually not halfway. It's just a little bit lower. So I want this, you can see it's just barely above the trees. So something like right around here. Just using the thin side and just making it bumpy like that. So 
So very thin here. And you've had a lot of practice with making this tree. So this should be pretty, hopefully a lot easier to do and very, very similar in terms of technique. Use your detailed brush when you're doing the little twigs, but I'm going to make it quite thick. So at the bottom, uh, I'm just getting it really thin up here. It's very kind of wavy like that. And let's just fill this part in. Doesn't have to be perfect. Some rough terrain here. And then I switched to my detailed brush, washing that off. Detailed brush, water and black paint. So the trick is building off of it. So I, I want to put lots of roots. Let's put it that way. Looks like there's a lot of earthy roots forming. I'm sure we're familiar with the story what's happening here. Just paving the way kind of magically. And sometimes they don't even have to be connecting up here. They can just kind of disappear off to the side, but I'm not going too wide. I'm actually trying to keep it in with the whole, um, the dirt and the earth that's forming around there. Try to keep it all with the piece of land and up here too. Just a couple bits of lines and little roots that are coming out. So I just want it to be super light touch. Use a Sharpie. I'm going to keep saying that because it's a great little cheat. But you have to wait for it to dry if you're using a Sharpie to put these tiny little lines. Most paper thin here. just working pretty fast like I did with the tree. So I'm not thinking too hard about each one. They're just wavy little lines that are showing through. And do as much as you want, really. Don't worry about highlights just yet. I want to get to the other side. So since we're doing this, we may as well put the other side in. This side. Now you can, you know, at the point in the story, you can either have them just barely touching, which is kind of cool or not really where um, there's a bit more separation between death and the three brothers. So that is up to you what you feel like doing, but I think I'll have it just barely touching. Like, is it touching? It's kind of forming together and death's just chilling over here. And doing the exact same thing. I do want to fill this in. I'll probably use my larger brush once more, the flat, bigger one, just to fill in this part.
Then let's just add with our detailed brush, just a couple little flicks. If you want to put some grass in, maybe you're looking for some fillers, grabbing some water and black paint, lightly flick it upwards. Or use a fan brush if you're wanting to use that. You just do a couple little streaks and you got a bunch of grass. Just kind of flick it up, especially on the side. And then I'm not going to put anywhere death is going to sit. I don't want it to. Yeah, I just want that to be as a little section there. So hopefully this is pretty fun. There's a lot that you can make kind of to your own taste of details and everything. Then I wash off that detailed brush. Which I will use very shortly. Um, it's it's going to be, if you feel like doing this, if you feel like it, it's only if you have the space available. Here I try to, I don't know if I really try to, but I just, I happen to have this not covering too much on the side here, which is okay. And I don't have to worry about filling anything. You can just be water underneath. And over here, you can start like putting some rocks or boulders. And I can show you just a little bit of that as a small little filler before we do death. And then our brother, actually I want to do the brothers first because you want to get that done before you start working on death. He's, he's his own kind of character. He doesn't look anything like them. Okay, I don't even know if a rock is very much justified into my painting right now, but let's just show you anyways. That's okay. I am taking my uh, dark gray, if you want to build off of a brown, mostly just grays at this point. So everything I had on the side there, I just kind of revived it with a bit of water, maybe a touch more black. And all I'm doing is adding some water little dabs where you can make a very bumpy kind of hill shape. So it could be a hill. Yeah, I can't really make a big rock anyways. It will just not look correct because this is so far away. But um, the trick from if you're just making a rock with uh, a little bit of like a, um, a bumpy outline, just put a little bit of white after it and just highlight a bit of a rock shape. And what shape is a rock? Well, that's a good question. Whatever you shape it to be, really. Could be boulders back here. And you can outline with some, say, black if you want to, once that is done. I made mine very small, so it doesn't look ridiculous, I guess, against a very distant horizon over there. These are fillers, so if you have no space for rocks, don't worry about it. If you have some space here, I just filled it in with my background color, put more trees, put more sticks coming down, or put a lumpy rock kind of a little bit bumpy, highlight at the top with some white. I'm 
All right, let's start with our silhouettes of the three brothers. Those are gonna be interesting. I do suggest a pencil, definitely. But I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna go for it with my detailed brush, black paint. Use your pencil first. So here we go. I have, first you wanna make sure that you have room for one, two, three brothers. So this one over here, one over here, one here. All I'm hoping for is that this actually works out because sometimes when you go for it, you get your proportions wrong and you don't want that. Um, this first guy, he's pretty, he's up here because there's a ledge right here. So I wanna have a little bit of space. So it's my legs, a little bit of a waist belt, chest area, arm. So he's got a funny looking face. He's got a little bit of a chin sticking out, a little bit pointed. And you can start with an oval shape. Shaped like a chicken leg. See that, that little line sticking out? There we go. Sort of, or the letter Q. Notice I'm not going too big here which you can always make bigger. If you make a giant head, then all of a sudden you have these giant people. So people have necks too. Let's just put a little line. Then this is where the body, the body will start shaping that. So you'll notice that starting with a, a little bit of a basic shape, for example, so he's got, they, everyone's got shoulders. These guys, they look, this guy is the tough guy. You know, he was the tough one. He seemed very arrogant <laughs> and actually really strong, which he got the strong, he got the powerful weapon or sorry, the one. So I'm going to make a triangle shape pretty narrow, just a little bit of a line to square it off at the bottom. So it's not completely thin at the waist, but we'll, we'll adjust it. And then this goes into his little belt here. So just a little bit of a rectangle sticking out. As for legs, the way that he's standing, because this is going upwards, so he's got his leg just kind of it's going to be more in parts and shapes. So you're going to do just an oval shape, kind of like this. And you know what? His pants, they could be, they almost remind me a little bit of the samurai pants, just because of how wide they can be. Stick them out like that. And on the other side, this one's more off to the side, a bit straight down. So this one's off to the side here. Just another oval shape. So those are the thighs, basically the upper part of the leg before it gets into the knee. More bending point. And then just from here, see that's where the knee is. And he's got into his shin. Usually at this point you have, a, he has a little bit of a calf. So it's kind of rounded a little bit and back to really thin at the bottom to I did, you can keep it simple. Shoes can be just very basic, um, like soft rectangles, little blob. If they hide into 
all of the commotion down here. Perfect. Okay, so the other leg is the continuation. See how it's on an angle like that? It's kind of just, you know, sticking a little bit out. You know, this guy's very, he seems very proud and just confident the way he's standing. So this is the back right here. Technically, this would be a bit more of his calf back to thin. And I just made a, make a diamond shape for the foot sticking out. So it's just, it comes out like a diamond shape, literally. So just follow that because it looks like you could see his foot from a different angle. And again, it's hard to see in the commotion of everything because uh, that makes it a lot easier. So nobody's really having to guess and it kind of works out nicely. So I'm just trying to fill this in up here. And his chest, you can just poof it out just a tiny bit. Be very careful with that though. Only if you can afford to, if it looks a little bit too puffy, stop <laughs> and just uh, go with white around it and just shrink it a little bit. Okay, so legs, make them a little bit at the top. It's almost like he's wearing shorts, you know, just they're a little bit more baggy. That is okay, a little bit more baggy. He's not wearing the tight pants. That's not his style. And okay, so the extension of his arm uh, without, you could do a straight line, but that's not exactly realistic. So when you put out your arm, Sometimes it has soft little bends and there's still a point where, you know, you have your elbow and has slight bends here and there, but it's also, if you bend it, then it's going to look completely different. You can even stick your own arm straight out and you can kind of see there's like a little dip where your elbow is just ever so slightly. So I'm just doing one little line out here for where it gets into the wrist. And his hand is just more of a, a ball. And pretty much like everyone, you want to get thicker as you get towards your body. And this guy, he seems like he's he's got some muscle, just a little. So I'm going to do that. A little bit of a bend on the bottom. And not super, super thin. It looks like right now he's going to punch somebody. His other arm is hanging off to the side. All very confident. So this is an extension of his shoulder. So that's where on the other side here, you're not really sticking it out too far. It does a little bit will make it look pretty over exaggerated. So there's a little bit of an extension come out and then it's just a bit more, it's pretty close to the body. Just kind of hanging, and relaxing, a little bit of a bend, a very wide angle. So it comes down Right, just keep it thicker here, comes down on an angle, and then into more of like a fist, so a little ball. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to um, put his, I'm going to put an extra, this is going to, it can look like 
some sort of weapon uh, if you're not careful here. But, you know, a wand, just a stick. It's really hard to, it's really hard to make it look like a wand when from a distance, it's just a stick, right? Or another type of weapon. All right, let's move on to the next guy. And remember, pause, take your time. I'm just going at a regular pace here so that just in case some people are fast or I'm not making you fast forward too much here. Okay, the next guy. I love how they get a little bit more humble as you get towards the back here. So this guy, um, pretty similar shape head. In fact, you probably want to make the exact same shape. You want to go a bit shorter because the, the terrain is getting, it's lower down. So we're trying not to go same height. We're trying to imagine more or less they're about the same height just for, you know, cinematic purposes here and helping you paint in your people so that you have some sort of reference point. And I'm going to just lower it a bit sort of close, right? You know, you want to have some space for this guy. And I'm going to make my chicken leg again as a head or a Q. The letter Q is probably my best analogy. See, see that for their chins. But this guy's got a beard, so you can be a little bit extra with the Q. <laughs> you can be a bit more of like a, just a little point for a beard. And he's got hair. So don't worry about the bald headedness. You can put hair if it's been bothering you. Then the neck, so neck right around here, about the middle. Okay. This guy, he's got a hood on the back and he's wearing, <laughs> he's wearing what looks like a superhero almost cape. Not really, it's more of a robe. But anyway, I'll do the hair in just a bit. Um, when you're looking at, so this guy, he's more profile here than this guy. This guy is, you know, right in everyone's face. He's like, look at me. He's a good profile view and usually your chest is sticking out. So from here, just a little bit on an angle down, just very slightly. And on the back, he has a bit of a, a hood. So that's going to stick out quite a bit. But let's not worry about that right now. Let's just make, again, a very similar shaped triangle, something like this. Oops, sticking out a bit further here, not too much on the back side. And this is coming a bit more straight down. And when you're making your sort of triangle, see how it represents a bit like that? At some point, you have to start going into more of the. So he has a bum, right? You have to put in that. <laughs> You have to put that in into the lower part. And about, I would say, it's about halfway. I mean, let's just, from here, it's about halfway. So let's just do, let's not over-exaggerate the bum, though. Let's keep it a bit more tame and not make it a focus point. But he does have his little cape. So that's kind of like the saving point instead of having to actually make the full outline. And this takes a lot, this takes care of a lot of the, any issues that you might have with making legs and worrying if it's in proportion. It's a little bit more forgiving. Okay, so let's go straight down here, a bit more straight, following to the end of the robe. Let's make things bigger in just a minute especially certain aspects like 
any body parts until we put his first leg. I don't know about you guys, the leg, when I was looking at the story, I thought like the way his leg was just sticking out seemed kind of just a little bit funny to me Only because it's just one leg, you know, and he's, it looked like a dress, but anyways, so right around, of course, where the bum is, the best way to, do, to visualize this is if you round it out, like you're trying to round out the bum and you know that your leg is attached to it. So therefore it's going to be an extension. Okay. So there's your extension. And then from here, more of a straight shin line in front with that calf rounded out from the back. So it's just got a little bit of a starting in here from the knee, a little bit of a calf and wherever the shoe is cool. So you can always make things bigger if you need to. I'm okay with it like this. I don't really need to make anything bigger. Let's make his hood at the back. Just a little bit of a rounding flat oval shape like that. So it's very thin. It's not sticking out too wide. It's very close together, just like a very floppy pancake. <laughs> Let's call it a floppy pancake. And you only see one arm, thank goodness. You don't have to worry about two. And um, so it's kind of like down here. So if you can imagine, this is a shoulder. You're like, okay, this seems like about the length that it would come down. And then it would come out like this for his forearm to his fist, which I'm not sure if he's angry. That was just his positioning and a little bit of a sleeve. So this is coming right down before it gets to that ball. And it's going to come up on an angle. Perfect. So let's put in his hair. This guy's got a little bit of a alfalfa, a little flick upwards, kind of like an Elvis thing. And then from here, you're just going to, it's a little bit of an extension of his head. It's not flat. So you're going to go a little bit higher, just around and a little, a little lick at the back, just a little curl back here. And the last guy, he is the most simple. He looks like he owns a sheep farm. And his body is non-existent under that humble looking piece of clothing that he's decided to wear. Which I'm only just saying this because he is the most humble, of course. The smartest one that got the cape. So he, we're just, you know, working our way down kind of like steps. He's lower down here and his face, there's, he's got curly hair. So sometimes that can be a little bit scary to make, but you know, just like the other guys just make the same type of head, right? Little Q, just a little bit of a Q. And for hair, if you're trying to do hair, just do some soft, rounded, like a little curl back here, and then another curl, kind of like this guy at the back. It's 
go a little bit closer. Some curls at the back. All right, then the neck again, about halfway. Roll stick. So he looks, it's just a square, you know, just, a, but you've got some shape. You don't want to just make a square and that's it. So start off almost like a square, a little line going across, and it's just staying pretty narrow. Start off a little bit thin. It's okay if he looks a bit sickly at first, but it gets a little bit wider towards the bottom. Just picture <laughs> it's a dress. It's let's be honest here. We're just basically drawing some sort of dress. That's the best way to put it when you're trying to draw this out. Think of it like almost like a dress. It has a little bit of a line up here and kind of comes in just a little bit and sticks tiny bit out. We're not trying to overdo it with the dress thing. I'm just, that's the best way to draw it out without actually making a, a rectangle and it has a little bit more width at the bottom. Okay. That guy's easy. Then He's got a bit of a hood, so this is sticking a little bit further out at the back, just a tiny, just a tiny little flick outwards for some sort of hood. And just in case, sometimes you just have to make sure that there's a little bit of a chest, but I know that we have to be careful that we're not making, you know, a different type of chest here. So in terms of legs, you can see that it's a little bit closer on this side. See the legs when they come out? It's just a stick. He's not, he's not the most muscly. <laughs> you know, a little stick. And then not too far off, that means, so that means like all of his waist is right around here. And this is just further back of his robe. And then I like to just put a little line and then a little box or a rectangle angled up so it looks like he's walking. He's not just standing without moving. This has movement now. All right, so that was a lot of work and talking. Hopefully my analogies helped and kind of entertaining to help walk you through it. So I'm going to keep using my detailed brush, but I just wash it off. And then when you're done and happy with that, we're going to add our highlights on this area here, back here. And then we will work on the, the death, the death, the death itself, the character. So with my detail brush, I'm just gonna grab that again. We'll take, instead of just taking white, that's actually not what I'm trying to take, it's plain white, I'm trying to take a light gray. White and a touch of black. See, just a light gray. Water. I'll show you a little bit up close. It's good for highlights, testing it out, seeing that if it's too bright still, just add a touch more black and you get more of a subtle highlight in some spots. So if I add a touch more black, you'll see that it doesn't come off as strong and it just looks like you can barely see. And you're just inside here, you're just making it up. Oh, 
there are some comments if you don't know much about the story. Um, the painting is pretty cool. Or at least when I was painting, I was painting and I thought it was pretty cool. Um, maybe you've learned something about the story, but the, actually the story, the three brothers from Harry Potter is a good story. I'm not telling you to go watch it or read it, but I like the story. And it's a very short story, by the way. There we go. So we have, you know, a little bit up here. You can go as far in as you want at the bottom. Just as you get further in, I'm just taking more black. So it's much more closer to the black side of highlights. It's more of a low light. And then it's not as noticeable. You can also just take a bunch of black and hide anything that you don't want to show. So let's do the other side, exactly the same. The other option is taking yellow, white, and some black, that yellow theme that we've been sticking with. You can do that too. You can do a bit of both or just one or the other. Put a little bit of yellow added in. Add a touch more black as I get further in on this hill. Okay, I'm just going to go back out again. Okay, so what do we think so far in terms of difficulty? People, yes, people are hard. I know, it can be. But these are not just your regular people. They're hopefully a little bit easier. Now you can still use whatever is left over from your highlight just to highlight a little bit on the edge of this tree here. And I just do, so I went pretty thick there on the side. That's okay, nothing that some black cannot fix. Um, just do it as much as you want, wherever you want. Just a couple of squiggly lines gives it a bit more texture, nothing too fancy. And okay. Yeah, very, very couple of lines here and there. Maybe I'll take some black and just go over some of this just to thin it out or make it disappear. And we're just about to start death. You can make them bigger, you know, he's, he gets pretty big at some point. Um, I think the way it looks is pretty awesome. It kind of reminds me of an alien when I start explaining it. So you can think in terms almost like an alien, but not too much like an alien. Just a little bit. I'm going to go back in again. I should have just kept it. All right. So here we have... Death on one side, on the other side. And uh, in terms of color, yeah, start with your black again. So however tall you want to go, it's totally up to you. I'm going to, so he's got an interesting face. So let's just put it that way. He's got like the, the biggest hunchback going on that you can imagine. And... Um, that means you're going to start off much lower towards the ground to help give it that look. 
So let's just say that his really intense spine is sticking out his neck all the way over here, pretty close to the moon or just barely on top of the moon. For me, my moon is bigger, so I think this is a good spot, leaving me a decent amount of space. So in terms of the alien head I was talking about, it has a little bit of like this, when you start with your oval shape like that, it's almost like an actual person until we get to the rest of the skull, um, which is gonna help make it look more like a skull. It's got like this extension, you know, when you're going into your mouth, let's call it a bit like a beard. So it's almost slightly sticking out further than his head. He's got this long jaw, which is attached to, which kind of attaches to the rest of his head here, but it leaves a bit more extra bone at the back. So right now I am going bigger than what I did in the original. And you know what? It just helps you see a little bit better. And it justifies that he is a little bit bigger overall. So uh, don't worry about what he's wearing until until we get there. It's gonna we have to try to make it look transparent, which is also a little tiny bit difficult. So the bottom of where the back of his head is, that's where his spine, that's where everything like spine is coming out from. So see, it's just kind of going out like a little bit straight across, up, up like this on an angle and just really hunched over. Just a little bit like he's got a little bit of his lower body sticking out a bit and this horrible, horrible hunch. Poor guy. See how it's like this. Now, in terms of shape, um, this is just, you know, my interpretation of it. Uh, for sure, he is more closely looking like this than other images I've seen of him. But I think I put a little bit more extra um, skeleton kind of looking things in his body before you, I put his robe on him. And as long as you have, see this dip down straight across a bit, then up almost level with his head, which in fact, that part of his spine has like a bit of a hook. So that's where you extend and make just a little bit of a hook. So it's like level with his head now. That's what makes him look like death from... The, the the movie and resemble him a lot more. So just a couple little hooks up here, which also can look like his other arm on the other side. So if you look at it, depending on how you're looking at it, it can be like his arm is on the other side, up like that above his head. But really, I think it's more of his spine. Um, his arms are more laying low, kind of moving around a lot, very more relaxed. Okay. So I just put a little line right here, coming from that hook, just swooping down around where his neck is. Then what I did is made his rib cage. They're just soft curves coming around. Just a couple little lines, some a little bit longer into his waist without having to work too much here. Um, just something very simple. We're not going to be focused on to it because he's going to be wearing a robe that's going to mostly hide what, whatever is happening under there. And um, his body is sadly really, really stick thin, but nothing that, so 
this is where his waist would technically be. So you can kind of stick out something like that right now until we put his robe on. So in terms of an arm, I'm just touching up on the color over here because if it wasn't black enough, it was picking up any white, it just stays like gray. So sometimes another coat is okay. His arm, like I was saying, it's very relaxed. It's actually hanging out, just, it can overlap his rib cage. For reference, you know, it has to be attached to something. So it's kind of like coming down and it's gonna start sticking out and he's just doing like this weird, creepy, I don't even know. Yeah, it was just, there's a little bend here and it's all very thin. So that's the part, we haven't done his hand, but that's just part of where his hand's gonna be and it's just all gonna be like curled down. So we're just trying to do a bit of a couple little lines curled over. Come back to it later if you need to. Not a huge deal. And now we can work on his robe. Just waiting a second, just in case you need to catch up for a minute. Which also I'm going to touch up down here, uh, put a bit more highlights. So maybe some more yellow and white, some bright yellow. So I'm doing a lot of intertwining and when you put multiple layers of overlap and intertwining, it tends to look like there's a lot more of a 3D look and more depth into stuff like this. So same on the other side, if I put a couple more intertwining layers, maybe with something a bit brighter, now you have more depth. curling, overlapping. Same can be done with black. So if you need to do, you have a, too much, right? You just take black and you do the same thing, but with black so that it, it shows more shadows in between.
Okay, so I will I'll probably just leave that alone. <laughs> leave it. All right, back to back to our little creature. Detailed brush. And in terms of color, let's just do a little bit of a lighter gray. Some black, some white, not too dark, not too light kind of gray. Something like that. Then, so from his face, he's got like this little shawl hanging here. It's almost like, I'm actually gonna add a little bit more white Coming up into the back. Okay, I have to go back a bit darker. And uh, one of the colors is pretty much remaking your background color. So if I just put it on the side here, yellow, a little bit of red, mixed with some a dip of black and white. If you get it pretty similar to your background color, and I'm going to keep, I'm going to add a little bit of white so it's, it kind of resembles my background color a little bit more. Doesn't have to be exact match actually. So I'm wiping off a lot of the paint. So I just wiped off a lot of the paint onto my napkin, a little bit of water, picked up a very small amount. And test it out. I think we need to go just a touch more. It's almost like you're filling it in a little bit. So it's slightly different in color maybe it's a little bit more different it's a lot more different but if you water it down it doesn't come off as heavy and it just it, the, the blood of the background actually shows through and you only see a little bit of whatever color you just put so i'm going to take a little bit more black to outline what i just put here which just helps keep it more defined i think Okay, let's try to keep going with that color. So I gave him a little bit more thickness. You can just follow along the top. Just with my darker gray, same darker gray I started with. And see how this is kind of swooping in around the chest. I wanna put this robe just hanging down and really a couple strands. He's got a lot of loose strands, a couple strands overlapping his legs curling back. So if I take a little bit more, if I just take plain black here and I put some, make this a little bit darker, you can see there's a bit more of a coverage there. And I'm just still following the shape of his body back here. It's all just falling down his back and then towards the legs is like flipping back away from him. And around his arm, he's got like this 
I'm going to use a bit more black so you can see. If you just kind of wrap around right around the wrist, you know, put a little line, a couple little streaks coming down, just right there in the front. If I take a little bit of white and mix it in with my previous golden color that I had mixed or the yellow ochre. So just go a little bit brighter. That's kind of what I want to do. You can give it a bit more highlight into his robe and cape, which actually makes it look a bit more whimsical, a bit more filled in, less of his body actually showing and just hints of it showing so it's like i'm following in between some of these black lines so there's a bit of darkness sometimes and um, some highlights here and there So what I like to do with some black is just define his back spine. Just define that, make it pop out a little bit more. You can define a little bit more on his rib cage into his neck, make it a little bit thicker as it gets into the face. Into the leg here at the back. And I think his arm is something that we really want to make known and noticeable. And I'm just, whoops, could be a little bit too bright. I'm just adding some highlights through it. Just really filling this more in instead of having his body show too much. I want to make it look like there's more of a, you can't really see what's going on on the bottom part because that's kind of how I interpreted the way that he looked. There's a lot more shawl going on here, a lot more drapery. And then up here, you can see a little bit more. So his other arm could be a little bit further back here. If you want to put a little bit of like a short line, kind of like a branch on the back. And it, it can look like he has his arm on the other side, just doing the same thing, hanging low, chilling out. And then all we have to do is finish up with our tree. Tree with a couple birds, maybe. So 
So let's start with our detailed brush. Maybe I'll start with my flat, yeah. Take my black. So not too far, like just really close to him. I did much more thicker tree. And it's just a bit more bendy. So a bit more rounded like that, a bit more wavy, really taking up a lot of space. Trying not to put too much emptiness. And this one is going much thicker, so I'm gonna press a lot harder and then keep it, again, thinner on the end, but it's not getting as thin as the other tree that we started with. I'm trying to make this look like it's a bit more closer or just bigger in general, one of those big trees. So all we have to do from here is use the thin side, which you can switch to your detailed brush and I kind of encourage that actually. I'm doing some branches. I'm gonna switch to my detailed. Press harder coming from the tree and do your weird dips and turns and curls, something like that. I'm going a little bit higher on the tree first and then I'm going to switch to a little bit of a lighter grayish tone. Let's do a couple branches. Starting to fill up space, going off to the other side where you can't see a lot of the branches anyway. And a little bit out here. So sometimes I like to do just squiggly lines, you know? Sometimes it's, it's just, for me, it represents branches that you can see through the leaves or in front of the leaves and there's a gap sometimes because the leaves are covering it. So if you want to go lighter, which I, I like to go a bit lighter. I like to go to my, I have actually my leftover goldish looking paint from when I used, I used it for the drapery on death. Let me use some of that. Water. and make some branches. They look like they're further away. They're more foggy in the distance. A little bit connected to the side here. Give us some highlight already. Need a bit more black. If you can't see it against your background, you just need to go darker with more black. Couple little twigs here. And just filling up a lot of space, making it look like there's a lot of busyness, but the different shades of your gray and your gold, if you put a little bit more white into it, if you had it um, really, really dark, if I put a little bit more white into it, it looks like you have lots of elements and layers of these branches in the background. And I'm just filling up all the gaps and trying to make this tree look like it's it's been around for a while. It's been growing a lot of these branches forever. Couple little 
squiggly lines in towards the moon, mostly all hanging out towards the top, just getting a lot of layers up there, getting up to the very top of your canvas so it looks like it's growing even taller than what we can see. You can take a little bit of white paint just to highlight right into the main part of your branch very quickly. While it's still wet, it, it gives it a little extra bit of texture. Yeah. Okay. So if you're looking to add any more leaves onto the tree, I will do that in just a minute. You can just leave it as is too. You can also add in some birds. Because birds, birds are a nice little touch with your detailed brush, a little bit of black. We'll do a little V shape. Tiny little distant bird here, mostly around this tree. You can go crazy too. You can just do lots of birds. It's like they're coming from the tree, they're part of the tree, we don't know. And yes, this is going to re remain up forever on our YouTube channel. So don't worry about that. You can watch this pretty much any time. Okay, so my last little step, if you're looking to add just a couple more leafy branches, because maybe you have, um, I don't know, your background, maybe it's not dark enough for you, you just want some more darker leaves. You can use, uh, personally, I like a round brush or anything frayed. So a round or flat that is more frayed, you're just gonna fray it a little bit like this. Kind of keep it a bit wider overall. And um, I would just mix with a slightly smaller brush maybe some, let me move this over. So on the side, uh, if you wanna go more brown, you can take a bit more yellow or your yellow ochre, touch more red added, touch of black, give it a just a deeper brown color. You can change up the color just a bit overall. So equal parts red and yellow can give it more of a true brown, warm brown that is, let's see right here on the side. So equal parts red and yellow, dip of black or two, and then a little dip of white. If you're keeping it more like the background, just give it an extra dip or two of some yellow. So let's try this out. Let's just lightly press. Just let it pick it up as it's frayed. And that way it just won't It'll keep it more frayed and it'll come off really spongy. Let's just try this out. A little dabs. It comes off very light when you don't pick up too much at a time. And when it's frayed, or you can use a sponge, there we go. You can use a sponge and it will keep it very spongy looking, not too thick, and you can still see everything you put for your trees. And I think I'm good with that. I'm gonna stop there. Okay, so that should be everything.
We would love to see results. I think this was more of a challenging painting, to be very honest. Just didn't want to scare anyone away right at the beginning. And, you know, I think it was worth it. You can go to our Facebook page, Arts Palette Durham Region, um, show results under the event or post under our calendar. On our page, we post a monthly calendar of what we're hosting for the month. Zoom and free events. Um, so yeah, hopefully you can join us again. Thanks for painting along with me. And hopefully you learn some things with a more difficult painting that's a bit more monochromatic too. Bye guys.